Jennifer, and you want to introduce this to us today. Absolutely. I am delighted to do that. So welcome, everyone. I am delighted that you've joined us today for creating your spider web of success. Um, we're going to be talking about networking today, um, which is always one of my favorite topics because it has influenced really everything that I have done all the way back as far as deciding, hey, I want to be a lawyer and my entire career. So that's our topic. I'm Julie Fleming. My business is Fleming Strategic. I practiced law for about 15 years doing mostly patent litigation before I decided to shift into legal business development consulting. I've been doing that since about uh, 2005. And yeah, here we are. And I'm delighted to be with Ivy Slater. So Ivy. Hi, I am um, and a welcome attendees. I see a bunch of people are popping in here. I am Ivy Slater. I'm the owner and CEO and founder of Slater Success. We are a coaching and consulting company. Um, previous to this, I owned and operated a printing company in New York City for over 20 years. I'm a firm believer of that relationships are the golden ticket to success. Uh, my second book was all about, you know, from the bar to the boardroom, choreographing business success through authentic relationships. Um, I work probably about 60 plus percent of my business are with law firms and attorneys and a lot of other than the balance is with a variety of other professional service space, um, including CPA, CFO, bookkeeping companies, and a few others under the service-based umbrella, um, which is kind of funny if I ran a business that's a product that I sold a product for 20 much years. I just always find that funny. Um, and Julie, you, you have a book that is also all about rainmaking, which is what brought us to really talk today a lot about networking. Want to share that title? Sure, absolutely. My, my primary book is the um, Reluctant Runmaker, sorry, the Reluctant Rainmaker, a guide for lawyers who hate selling. I also have another book about legal business development, which is Legal Rainmaking Myths. What you think you know about business development could kill your practice. I love that. Yes, yes. As long as you learn and don't let it kill, yes, I love it too. <laughs> yes. And, you know, today's conversation is an interactive conversation. You know, Julie and I consider it a fireside chat. I don't know if I'm building a fire today um, where I am. Yet it, it is our fireside chat that we're inviting you in to join us. You know, so please comment in the chat. Feel free to, you know, say, hey, you want to share something? We will bring you up and, and unmute. Of course, we'll figure this out as we go along, being us tech people. Um, you know, it, it's a conversation because we all here are looking, you know, you show up with the desire, the, the commitment to grow and learn and expand. And um, networking is one of the greatest things we can do for our so many areas of not just our businesses, but many aspects of our whole world. Absolutely. And, you know, Ivy, I think it might even be helpful as a step into that to share that we got here. As you said, we, we have this uh, common focus of our businesses, but we, we actually got together as part of a Zoom cocktail party not long after the pandemic started. It had been some time since we'd spoken. And that's what led to this series of webinars. So there you go, networking in practice. <laughs> it's, it's so true. Uh, a mu mutual colleague, friend of Julie and Allies. You know, Julie and I met, I don't know, a, many, a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of years ago. We'll put three bunches in there. And as life gets busy and we've all been there, we lost touch a little bit, but we had mutual friends who stayed in touch and kind of kept us informed in different ways. And then this friend of ours had this cocktail party and said, you know, you want to show up with your favorite cocktail and reconnect with a bunch of mutual old relationships. And from that moment, Julie and I said, we ought to, you know, let's do a one-on-one. -on -one. Let's play together. There was no agenda to creating this series. It was let's play together and create. And I think, you know, there was a huge learning lesson there of sometimes we're so busy creating those agendas for meetings. And believe me, I'm all for about showing up at a meeting with a specific agenda, but we showed up to play to see what we could create. And 
there's a importance and a space for that too, a, a space of showing up. I'll, I'll always refer to it as showing up with an open heart and an open mind. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's a phrase that I love from another legal, legal business development consultant that's random acts of lunch. And so I think we want to be very clear, right, that it's good to have conversations. It's good to have this open heart approach. I think that's really important, obviously. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be sitting here. And also to know at a certain point, when is this something, when is this conversation something that is going to move us forward in a business sense? Or is it, you know, not every conversation has to, not every relationship has to all the time, um, but being very intentional. Where are we in this conversation? Where are we going with this conversation? And frankly, is that the right place for us to go? And I just want to invite participants to, you know, post any questions you have in the chat, also any comments, what's resonating from this conversation. So Julie, I have a question for you and, I don't, and we didn't prep this by the way, this, this question, um, but it, it, something happened the other day in my world and it made me think to ask you this. What is the craziest thing that some of the crazy things or and a crazy example of something that developed from just relationship building? Mm. Wow, that's a good question. Let me filter through for a moment and come up with the most appropriate one. I think that <laughs> <laughs> the one that I'll highlight right now, I had gone to a, a seminar one time totally unrelated to the law. It was just a, a straight business building sort of seminar. Um, like most lawyers, I had no business training. And so when I started my business, I thought, you know, let me, let me see what I can learn about this on the front end rather than trying to do what I know to do and being working really hard on the performing side of my business, doing the consulting, doing the writing, those things, and not pay that much attention to business and see how it goes wrong. <laughs> um, tried that in the past, didn't work well. So I did it on the front end this time. And I had met a woman there who was also a lawyer. She had moved out of practicing law into a completely different area. Um, but we decided that we were both going to be in the, the same town by sheer happenstance, not a town where either of us lived. Um, but we decided that we would get together there. And I, I want to be clear, sometimes networking is not very often, it's not a direct path from meeting to great conversation to something happens. That's a perfect thing to uh, use this as an example of. We had met so long previously, we kept up on social media and that's how we found out we were gonna be in the same town. I didn't remember what she looked like actually in person. I saw her little picture on social media, but we all know how those pictures can go. So we met in person, it was actually in Denver and we had a terrific conversation. We discovered a lot of commonalities, which happens to me a lot. I imagine it does to others as well. And long story short, I ended up renting this woman's house for a couple of weeks and conducting a completely different kind of event with her in this house um, that led to, I also run a nonprofit and it led to some things with the nonprofit. So completely unrelated to law, completely unrelated to business building, out of left field, could not have designed this. And yet there we were. How's that for a crazy outcome? <laughs> um, that it's, I love the crazy outcome and it's just always so interesting as we see things that you never, never expected. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it, that, that's the furthest to field. Of course, there have been plenty of others that have led to writing opportunities for uh, legal periodicals, that have led to speaking engagements, all kinds of things that are a little more foreseeable. Um, but truly, you never know where a conversation may take you. <laughs> How about you, Ivy? I love that question. Um, goodness, there, there's, been, there's been a whole variety. Um, 
this actually, he, here's something that's I just found, have found incredibly comical. Um, and there's no ROI attached to it yet because this happened less than a week ago. Okay. It, it truly actually, I think it might have happened one week ago today. Hmm. And so I, I, I do a bunch of stuff in the, you know, media world and, and writing and, and some guest spots of different things, whatever, be that as it may. Um, I host, many of you know, or some of you don't, I host a podcast called Her Success Story. I'm on many different podcasts. I have a LinkedIn live show called Slater Success Live. Um, be that as it may, I was on through this media PR company out in LA. So I'm New York based. So I'm just wanting to kind of, you guys get the whole geography of it. I'm in New York based on normal day, not today. Um, a media PR company that I've, has done, I've done business with for several years connects me to a guy in Colorado, back to Colorado, to be on his, his radio show. I'm on his radio show. I think he sounds pretty cool. I really like, you know, I did my back end research. So then I said, hey, I'd love to have you on for success for in my podcast. I do a pre-interview. In this pre-interview, I find out he's originally from New York. He moved out to Colorado close to 35, close to 40 years, 35, 40 years ago. Blah, 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 blah. He's built this whole um, uh, skincare brand. He actually was in the early developers with List Text, found this all fascinating and said, yeah, I'd love to have you do the recording. And he goes, I have somebody I really think you should meet. I was like, okay, great. Because I'm going to do an email introduction. This woman is fabulous. I just think you really need to meet her. So he does the email introduction and I see her name and I do my thing. I pull her up. I see her LinkedIn profile. I look at her website and I'm looking and saying, I know her. Hmm. And then, exactly. And, and then I was like, I know her. And I start going through that, that mental, did I grow up with her? Did I go to college with her? Did I know her from printing? Right? Was she, did she work for W Magazine? Did she work for Women's Wear Daily? Did she work for Harper's Bazaar? Did, did I know her from one of the publishing companies or something I did in that world? I'm looking at this picture and I say, I know I know her, I can't place it. We schedule, we, we do, you know, the assistants come through, they schedule the pre-call before we schedule a recording for the podcast. And we have this Zoom call last Monday morning and I see her and it's one of those bad connections. So her videos going in and out, of course, Naturally. the universe is just playing with me. <laughs> and she, her first thing out of her mouth, she goes, you know me. And I said, I know I do. And in that moment, my brain clicked. And I said, you're this person's mom. And she said, exactly. And our sons are in first grade together. Oh, wow. She has a major brand. She is, she is massive in her field. And, she, and of course, we did the, the catch-up conversation because true networking is built on true relationships, not business. Mm -hmm. And so we had the true catch-up conversation where she just said, I'm still married to this one. Are you still married to that one? <laughs> Where are your kids today? Where are your kids today? So what is this you do in business today? Right? And, you know, I said, well, do you, I, I said, well, when you knew me, I was a printer. She goes, I know that. I remember that now that you mentioned that. And now I understand why you do what you do now and how you come to, right? It all transferred. And she goes, and I, and she shared her story. It's like, now I understand completely why and what you're doing and disrupting your industry and why you're a brand name in your industry and what you're doing next. This is so cool. Let's play together. Mm, oh, that's wonderful. And, you know, I can't, I can't give you the ROI. I can say, you know, to our listeners today and whoever's listening to this on recordings, Networking is not about always the business moment, although it's important you get there. 
It's about building a honest, true, real relationship. Because whether the business happens today or if it happens two years from now, that you're then able to stay truly grounded in that relationship for the business to develop. I love that. That's a wonderful story, Ivy. And I love that, that your brain clicked at just the right moment. That's amazing. The universe <laughs> delivered it. Yes, yes, <laughs> as it does sometimes. <laughs> as it does sometimes. So we have, we have a question. Exactly, yes. So Janet's asking, can you give examples of smoothly handling the issue of proposing a way to bond? In other words, I can offer you X and here's what, and here's what I'd like to dot, dot, dot. So I'm, I'm interpreting this question and it sounds to me like what Janet is asking is maybe taking it past that initial conversation into the business part of the conversation. Is that, is that your, well, number one, Janet, is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. All right. So for me, I think that there, there has to be that groundwork, that, that connection first. And then it does go, you, it, it's almost hard for me to say, here's how you do it. Because for my conversations, it's very much in the moment. It depends on how this conversation has gone, what specifically has come up. But generally in the course of the grounding conversation, there will be just like Ivy was saying with her example, this moment called, oh, you're doing fill in the blank. And I'm doing fill in the blank. And I see how those two things connect. So for me, it's less, um, less about I can offer you this and this is what I'd like. That to me, um, that can feel really transactional, which I think is why you're asking the question, Janet. We don't really want to feel transactional about it. There's this moment where it comes together. And I can start to see a connection, whether it's as clear as, you know, I've always wanted to speak at the so-and-so conference and, and you're on the planning committee. Wow, that's amazing. Um, how can I help you find the right speakers? And by the way, I'd love to be one. Um, or it can be as amorphous as the conversation that Ivy and I had initially, which is, hey, we're both playing in this area. Um, the pandemic has just started off. My clients are facing these things. Oh, yours are too. Maybe we should do a webinar series. Let's figure out what that might look like. What do you think, Ivy? Um, I, I agree with you, Julie. I think sometimes, especially in early getting to know you, you have to come to with true authenticity. Um, and I guess the greatest way I can give this as an example is what I'm having dinner with somebody outside tonight, okay? Um, somebody I know from a networking group. We got to get, we started getting to know each other from this networking group. He's an HR, he's an HR consultant. It's good resources. I've referred him, he's done, referred me. I'm prop, he's not my client, I'm not his client. Yet, you know, Here's a great example. Somebody came to him and said, we are looking to build a panel on something. And he said, oh, you need to have an idea on that panel. She can give great insight. Yeah. Somebody in, in a group I'm part of threw something out there on something on their, their law firm. They're like, we're looking for a consultant in EHR. And I said, oh, I have somebody for you to have a conversation with. I happen to be a you know right by him where I am visiting right now. And we're doing an outdoor dinner with our spouses because we've truly gotten to know each other and we truly like each other. And I've heard so much of him was referring to his wife and he's heard me refer to my husband. So it's not every conversation isn't about the final transaction. There has to be all the middle conversations where you truly, truly, truly get to know one another you know what their missions are, you know what their values are, you know how you can be an asset to them. Yet, I am gonna say there's times, so there, um, I'm gonna expand on this for a second. 
I'm in, involved in two nonprofits. I know Julie has a massive, uh, a major nonprofit that I'm a huge fan of. And, and as Julie and I align with each other, we're both involved, believe in nonprofits and being leaders in them. So there's something of two organizations that have similar alignment on two different angles that I've been involved in for a long time. I go into this, you know, breakfast, 500 people back in the day, not recently, um, you know, and I'm at a random table of, of, you know, you know, one of their benefits. And I sit next to this woman and we start chatting and she goes, you know, how are you involved in the organization? I said, well, I do this and this with the organization. How are you involved in it? She goes, yes, I do this and this and it. We exchange cards. We link in with each other. We have a couple of conversations. She saw I'm speaking for a group of the women there. She goes, oh my goodness, I see you're gonna do this. I'm gonna come, I'd love to see you. We can have a cocktail after. We built a true relationship, got it guys? And she goes, you know, I have a day job, this and that, and I have a side business. One day when I'm ready to give up that day job and really expand on that side business, I'm gonna hire you. I said, okay, sure. Many people think this. Well, we continued, we continued to stay working with the nonprofit together, stay in contact. She reached out to me and we would speak like once a quarter, let's call it four times a year. And then we, we saw each other at benefits. We would try to sit by each other, at least at the same table. She would introduce me to new relationships that she made through the nonprofit and I would introduce her accordingly. A couple of years later, she, um, said, hey, it's a Friday, you know, Friday afternoon, you want to have lunch? I said, yeah, this is perfect. I'd love to. We didn't, uh, you know, meet halfway. We have lunch. And I assume we're here to talk about the nonprofit we're both involved in. And she looks at me and she goes, okay, Ivy, we order lunch. And she puts down her Amex in the middle of the table. I'm like, uh, is she picking up lunch? It's a little early. We didn't get our salads yet. <laughs> And I'm like, she goes, she goes, you see what I'm doing? I'm like, I see you put your Amex down. <laughs> she goes, no, I'm ready to hire you. I'm ready to build the company. I'm like, we haven't talked business yet. We haven't, I never gave her a price. I never wrote a proposal. I never invited, you know, we didn't get there. She goes, no, no, no. I said, she goes, whatever you charge, you charge. I know you're going to charge me fairly. You charge what you charge. You're an established company. She also knew that any percentage, any people I met through the nonprofit that I did any sort of business with, percentage of those sales went back to the nonprofit. So she goes, well, you charge what you charge. And I know in engaging you, we're going to give both give back to this nonprofit. But more importantly, I'm ready to build this business. She hired me that month. We did a couple of follow-up calls and hired me six months a month later because her business was expanding so rapidly. So we have to build the real relationships. And I could tell you about the men she was dating. I could tell you about where, where, her, where she lived, where her second home was. I could tell you so much because we, had a, we have a real relationship. And that's, you know, the heart of networking is not always the, when does the transaction come? It's knowing it comes if we keep staying in the relationship building. Yet you must have those business conversations. That doesn't mean you only, believe me, Julie and I don't only talk about jewelry and homes. Indeed. <laughs> Although we do at times. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and something I love about that story, Ivy, is that the thread that I think we've both sort of referred to, but have not specifically called out, so I'm going to call it out, is trust. Yeah. We build this relationship, and by, by showing up repeatedly, whether it's on social media, whether it's for meetings, whatever it might be, we learn to trust one another. And that's what allowed this woman to say, no, you've never told me what you charge. Um, but I know it's going to be fair. She trusted you. And that's the thing that I think we're all working toward when it comes to building these relationships. And when it comes to a relationship um, 
that leads to business as opposed to some other sort of business opportunity. In law, we love the phrase, the trusted advisor. Yeah. That's how you become the trusted advisor. Whether the business comes at the end of a relationship that you've built, not the end, but in the course of a relationship that you've built over a long time, or whether someone just is referred to you, comes to you in some other way, it's not a pre-existing relationship then you start getting to know one another. And of course the focus is on the business, but guys, I wanna be really sure to say, networking is not something that happens only in a room when you're holding back in the day in the before times, when you're holding a beverage. It's exactly, yes. It's not what happens only in one-on-one -on -one networking Zoom calls now. It's something that happens in the snippets of conversation. Hey, I've got this, this motion ready for your review. Here's the background. Here's what it's going to look like. Here's what we need to be aware of. Um, by the way, how are the kids doing in school? You know, my kid, this, that, and the other with school. What's your experience? It can be a very short conversation. It's still networking. It's still building that relationship and it's still building that trust as is. When you say, I'm going to have the motion ready for you to review on Tuesday, you have it ready on Tuesday and you communicate that. So there's so many, you know, I think one of the misconceptions about networking is that it's a lot of people, again, in the before times, yeah. stuffed into a room and everybody's kind of sweating and shifty eyed, looking for the right people to, to hit up for business. I mean, ooh, who wants to do that? Yuck. <laughs> Um, but networking actually is humans connecting with other humans in a human way, building trust. And I, 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 I think it's so important and, you know, and now it's been transformed into a lot of people in a Zoom room or a Teams room or something like that, where you're, you know, then doing these quick little one-on-one -on -one Zoom or Teams or whatever platforms or WebEx or whatever platforms you're your firms and companies are on into, you know, okay, well, we have, you know, 20 minutes. So, so who's your target market? What do you do? How can, you know, and, and you, it becomes in this very forced as opposed to natural. And I think one of the biggest challenges, and I think this is something that is, and I'd love our, our listeners and our attendees to weigh in on this, is the challenge right now because so many of us have multiple levels of responsibility of where we're working. If we're running our businesses from home or if we're working from home, if, we have, if we're homeschooling, if our kids are in school part-time, full-time, you know, college kids were, you know, now their college is now your dining room table. Um, and your office is now, was a closed door, is now a swinging door. How do we find the time when our worlds have shifted to network today? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's such a critical question. And I think now more than ever, when we're not at, at a gathering, when you can just bump into somebody in a lunch line yeah. or see somebody at registration and go, oh, I've been meaning to talk to that person. You know, now when we, for the most part, are still somewhere behind a screen, it's less organic. So how can we make a somewhat inorganic process more organic? And before we go there, Ivy, I want, before we fully leave this topic, yes. I want to share a comment that we received in chat since the chats go only to panelists. And this is too good for the rest of you to miss out on. Um, someone has said, in my experience, in most professional networking situations, the person you are meeting knows you are there for a business purpose. Therefore, if you have a connection, they will often bring up the business aspect without me having to mention it at all. And I think that's true. That certainly does happen. It's, it is so true. And thank you for sharing that. Um, just, I believe there's a way, guys, that you might be able to put in chat the panelists and attendees. Oh, good point. Yes, you're right. So what, um, as you guys are on chat, if you'd like to share it with everyone, please put it in panelists and attendees, and we can all share some good stream of conversation. But I, you know, and I love Julie and I will always bring it forward because great points should never be missed. They're learning lessons for all. 
Absolutely. Yes. So let's do shift, Ivy, to this question of time and of organic versus inorganic. I'm curious, what are you seeing these days? What are you seeing as the great opportunities for making time and having, having these connections be more natural? Um, you know, the one thing that I've always said, and I'm just doing it differently now, is if I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna put effort into showing up with any kind of networking organization, if it's an ABA event, if it's a BNI event, if it's a chamber of commerce event, if it, whatever it is in your various areas, you know, and there's a lot, there's a plethora of different things that are going on out there. Um, if I'm gonna block out the time, make, and I always say make the efforts. So this means like. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we're going to put on our, our, our clean shirts, a, a nice tie. I'm going to put on a little lipstick. You know, we're, we're going to make that effort. You know, I'm going to make sure I have some business cards. Yet to this that matter because I really want to take cards and initiate the conversation that are important to me. Then if I'm going to create that time, do the service of finding the follow-up time before you even show up. So if let's say it's Monday at two o'clock Eastern, 12th Mountain, um, <laughs> right? If, if we're looking at that, if, it, if it's two o'clock Eastern, 12th Pacific, and you figure out all your time zones in the middle, if I'm gonna create that 60 minutes or 90 minutes to show up at something, if it's a breakfast meeting, a lunch meeting, an afternoon thing or an evening, then in advance, I'm gonna open up in the next two weeks, several different times in my calendar to then schedule one-on-one -on -one calls where I truly, truly get to know people. If I can't open that up in my calendar, then it's not worth me showing up. Because if I'm that book, then just showing up isn't going to start and build those relationships. I so agree with that, Ivy. And it's it's easy to overlook because the focus of networking is on the networking, right? On those events where we can meet people. And again, I think that's another misconception because unless you do put in the follow-up time and the follow-up effort, no matter how good the initial connection may have been, it's going to wither. Occasionally other people will follow up, but I find that um, there's so much opportunity, just like you said, Ivy, I'd rather get the business cards and follow up with someone because in my experience, it's not all that often. Many people go in with great intentions. I don't, I'm sure no one here has done this, but I have. <laughs> and I'll get a stack of business cards and back in the day, I'd go back to my office and I had my desk and then behind me, I had my credenza and I would take those business cards and I would arrange them on the credenza and the order I wanted to contact people. And there they would sit. And X number of weeks later, after I had done, you know, various critical things, truly, legitimately important things, practicing law, right? That's important, servicing clients. Um, I would turn and I would look at these cars and I go, oh, oh, I should have done this sooner. Gosh, it's too late now. And I'd sweep them away and I would resolve to do better the next time. And that did not change for me until I learned to do exactly what you said, Ivy, plan the time in advance. So I, I truly think, you know, time, you know, none of us have enough time for everything we want to do. You know, and I always look at that plethora of everything we want to do. You know, it's it's the hours we implement. In our, in, in our firms and our businesses, right? It's the hours we, we spend on building brand and marketing and networking. It's the hours we focus on our numbers. It's the hours we focus on our, ourselves, our health, our wellness, which needs to be at that very, very top because if we don't take care of ourselves, right? You don't put your own oxygen, just blue first time. Don't put that. They still said the same thing, people. They still said the same thing. If you don't put your oxygen mask on before you help anyone else ever. So in that way in business, you know, a, in taking care of ourselves and doing all those wonderful things. And, and if that means sometimes getting a fresh breath air, there's times when I'm up 
state in the snow, and I know Julie's out in the cold, that I will just in the middle of the day open my front door and breathe. Absolutely. So, you know, all those things, we're always scheduling time. Know when you do that, you have to schedule the time and showing up to network. Show, schedule the follow-up at the same time you show up to network. And somebody just said, the follow-up is crucial. Yes, and I love that you capitalize crucial. <laughs> I have earned so much business throughout my career just by taking the time to acknowledge the, the meeting and take the time, some time to get to know the potential client. Everyone is busy. So when you take a moment to follow through, and I love you put that as follow through, this recipient feels special that you took the time out of your busy day to further the relationship. So beautifully yes. said. Yes, agreed. Agreed. And again, that builds trust too. So Julie, how do you, how do you, you know, in the, this organizing of, of relationship building, how do you schedule your time? What do you, what do you, what any tips or tricks that you have used or encouraged or what has worked and what has not worked for you? Hmm. So one of my favorite things to do, I, I run my life by Google calendar <laughs> and I, color code, everything. And so one of the things that I've done is there's a particular color that I've assigned for networking. And if I'm doing something, you know, I typically at this point don't engage in networking groups. I, I have a different business acquisition model, but I do a lot of going to ABA events, going, well, again, in the before days, now going to virtual events. Um, before I go to something, I do two things. Number one, I make sure that I have plenty of that follow-up color on my calendar. And that's tied in with, I use an online calendaring scheduling link. Yeah. Uh, make sure that if I say, I'd love to meet with you, would you please go to this link? I've got a few times that are available. If you don't see something convenient, please let me know. I wanna make sure that there are enough times available that it's a legitimate offer, right? So that's number one. Number two is every single week, I have a um, block on my calendar. I pull out my Friday mornings and that's my time to, I, I call it Friendship Friday. That's my time to follow up with people. And I'm using the word follow up. And of course, what I really mean here is to reconnect, to say, let's have a virtual coffee. And when I have it just, just as a regular part of my calendar, it's there, again, it's color coded. Um, it's something that I'm very careful to do every week. And of course, sometimes it'll interfere. There's, there'll be other things that interfere, but it's a focus. And I find that by keeping that focus and having times preset on my calendar and making sure those times are filled. If somebody doesn't fill up, my networking opportunities, you bet you can absolutely count on the fact that I will use those times to be reaching out to other people. I so that. that's the key thing that I do. How about you, Ivy? I love how you use that. So you open a space beforehand. It, 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 if it's not filled, then you use it as an action space. Right. And I think that is brilliant. Um, and I, I, by the way, that will be adopted by me. <laughs> Glad to share. A hundred percent. You know, I, I also, I use a calendar, I use a calendaring service, um, whether it be, you know, there's a lot of different, there's time trade, there's calendarly, and there's a host of others. It doesn't matter. There's a ton out there. Find the ones that are good resources for you. But I, um, kind of like the third week of every month, I pre-plan a month ahead. And then I also like, I have a great team behind me and they know, you know, if it's an introduction call, I allow a certain amount of time for that. So if somebody, I say, here's the link to, you know, loved, loved meeting you would really like to do, get to know, you know, get to know you further. 
here's my link and it has specific times in there just like Julie and then I take that and say I'm including my you know this person on my team if you struggle scheduling just let her know she will make it happen because I know I get busy and I forgot to, that I asked Julie to schedule and it felt and she couldn't find a time and she meant to go back and see if I open more time or she meant to email me and she got distracted because we're all human and we're all busy. So this is for me, I put a backup system in place of having my team member keep a record of it and make sure it happens because where I might get distracted or the person might get distracted, that's part of their job. So they stay attention, to, pay attention to the detail there. Mm. That's a brilliant tip, Ivy. I love that. Thank you. Because it is easy. Again, I, all of us have the best of intentions when we're doing these things. And it is easy to let things slip. And I love that, that backup. I, I shall adopt that. <laughs> um, so we have Janet asked, um, what, can you give us some examples of smoothly handling the issue of proposing a way to bond? In other words, can I offer you an, uh, no, we answered that one. Janet went on to say, and I'm, I'm sorry, Janet, if I'm not getting this well, um, what Julie mentioned about not being able to run, able to run into someone at an event on a Zoom call, it's harder. Um, yes, and I'm gonna kind of jump right in here. It's a little harder, but there's a great thing that goes on on Zoom calls that's called chat. And uh, um, there's a group I'm involved in. And I have to tell you, on our meetings, there's chat and there's private chat. And they are incredibly active. And it's not just me. You know, I, I people like, you know, regulars, it's like, I'll just get a quick like private, hey, I'd be glad to see you tonight. I'm like, oh, hi. And then I, of course, I have to make sure I'm hitting the right things, you know, that I'm privately responding to that person. Then. You know, everybody's saying happy birthday to somebody else. You know, we do a birth, monthly birthday celebration, you know, and then, but if it's privately, right? It's like, hey, I remember last year when we had drinks for your birthday, mm -hmm. you know? And then it's, you know, a, a lot of common things going on. And then a private chat saying, hey, we, let's pick this up and move this to like a, that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm going to email you my scheduling link right now. So in, although we are in a virtual situation right now, using the chats of what we're doing now in a way of talking in a community as well as privately, and those, that, those are those off the cuff conversations as if you were at a live event of saying uh, even you know, at a live event, I, I might see Julie and say, hey, it's so good to see you. I'm on my way to just, you know, check in, but um, let's make sure we catch up. If I did that at a live event, and then we both got distracted because it's entirely possible. If we're in Zoom, how I transfer that to a virtual event would be, hey, privately, Julie, it's so good to see you. I've been meaning to reach out and so we can catch up. I'm gonna shoot you an email right now with my calendar link. We're open to schedule it. Mm -hmm. How to transform the, the live to the virtual. I hope I answered that. Jen, um, Julie, did I miss anything? You, I don't think you missed anything, Ivy, but I wanna add one other aspect of this. Because for me, one of my favorite things in being at, let's say it's a, a, a CLE program. One of my favorite things is to hear somebody ask a question and I go, oh, that's a really interesting question. I'd like to talk with this person more. I think, you know, there may be some good conversation here. And then to grab that person at lunch or at the cocktail party after the program or whatever. And that's much harder to do. Ivy, your use the chat is ideally suited to that. But the other thing that I think is so important in being able to make new acquaintances this way and start these conversations is to be listening if you're at some sort of program. And I'm thinking, let me give you a very specific example. Um, I'm active in the ABA. I have a leadership role. And um, 
we had our sections council meeting on Friday. There were some new people there. And so with this ear, I'm listening to the ABA business. I'm thinking, what do I need to make sure to say, to do, to follow up on? I'm doing the, let's call it the substantive side. On this side, I'm saying, I don't recognize that person. That's somebody new. Let me reach out and say hello to them. And because I'm in a leadership role, you know, I'm, I introduced myself at the very beginning of the meeting. In a sense, everybody knows me, which makes it a lot easier for me to reach out and say, hi, I would love to talk with you. I'm so glad you're here. What brought you to our meeting? So you can have those relationship opening, connection opening kinds of conversations via chat also. You don't have to know somebody first. And the other thing that I'm seeing is more and more of a trend is that there will be some sort of specific networking time that's called aside. And if it's, again, like a, a CLE program, a lot of times people will be a little bit hesitant to go because there's, there's that awkwardness of how do I start a conversation with somebody I don't know when I can't say, oh, did you grab some of this shrimp cocktail? It's amazing. You know, when there's not that in-person thing that you can refer to that a lot of us, and I consider myself to be an introvert, that a lot of us introverts have gotten accustomed to finding ways of using to initiate conversation. In the virtual world, it's a little bit harder. So thinking about what can I say when it's just purely a networking conversation? What can I say in this virtual world to kick off conversation? What did you think about so-and-so speaker? Um, have you been, they mentioned this other conference. Have you been to that one? Um, they're, they're an unlimited number of possible intros, but if you think about it in advance, then you'll have them in your pocket ready to go. The other thing that I'm seeing is a trend is creating either, uh, I call it an affinity group kind of approach to networking. So young lawyers, women lawyers, lawyers of color, whatever it may be, finding your time in your particular networking event or the fun side, having like a trivia night. The ABA has been doing this for, for the annual meeting last year. And then this year for the mid-year meeting, a trivia event which puts you in with other people, most of whom you probably won't know. And then you can use these kind of openers. I share this because many of you may have opportunities to look at um, ways to, um, to build these into events that you may be taking part in. And I think that when we start to think about what is a good container for networking, in this more, more digital virtual world, then that gives us an opportunity to start to build it in. And if you're the person who suggests it, I guarantee you, you will also be one of the persons who's highlighted. And then you'll be in that position that I talked about, you'll be introduced, and then you'll find it that much easier to reach out to people. So that's, that's a long side note, but Janet, those are some of the additional thoughts that I would share. And I, I'd love to hear how those land with you if you have kind of follow-up questions or if that got to what you were looking for. And at the same time, I want to invite our attendees to put in you know, the takeaways. What, what, what is resonating in this conversation? And you know, it's always about, it's, it, this is how I roll. What's resonating to what's your takeaway and what are you going to implement from today, from showing up today? You guys are all dedicating this time and investing in yourselves. So it's a matter of not just listening, it's what are you taking away and what will you be implementing from today's conversation? Exactly. Yes, it's just like with the networking. If you network and don't follow through, not good. If you attend something and don't do anything with it, it's not going to get you anywhere new. Yeah, uh, absolutely so true. Julie, you know, one thing you said that really I, I just like hit me here, hit me in my heart, is when you then take that lead, you stand out as a leader. Mm -hmm. And when you stand out as a leader, that respect that you, that people look up to you, that people look to you for more insight and information. It sets you apart 
And so, you know, I invite everybody to look at any way that you can take a leadership perspective versus follower perspective. If you're gonna invest your time in showing up at any networking organization, doing any brand building, business building, network building, how can you invest at 100% showing up as a great leader, as a person who takes and sets the example for others? Yeah, I love that. I love that. And it's something that can come so naturally for people, because if you're passionate about something, of course, you're going to step up and find a way to make it better. And for me, when I have been involved in, say, networking groups, if I'm not passionate about the group, if I don't really enjoy the people, if I look at my calendar and think, oh, rather than, oh, it's not the right group for me. So that's the other thing that I would say, be sure that the fields that you're playing in are the right fields for you so that you will have that natural impetus as well as Ivy's exhortation to take on a leadership approach. So I see that we have three takeaways that um, Janet has shared. I love that. Thank you, Janet. And I hope the rest of you um, are making notes for yourself about your takeaways and what you're going to explore. You know, that's why we do this. We, I, I love talking with Ivy. I love the feedback that our uh, attendees and listeners give us. I really want to see you move ahead and do something that's a little bit different that maybe gets you different results. So please make sure you're doing that. And we have another topic coming up next month. Ivy, would you like to introduce that? Sure. Mark your calendars for Thursday, March 11th, when we're going to be talking about innovation, trepidation, and adaptation, right? So how can in business we can continue to be innovative, how that can be, ugh, bring us to a feeling a little bit of trepidation there and how we adapt and move through it. You know, we're gonna talk about when you try something new, how do you measure the success for, this, for yourself and the venture and how and when, what does commitment look like? And Ivy, I cannot help noticing, as you were saying that I was looking at the chat and seeing a comment, um, it's okay to be an introvert and still network, even if out of your comfort zone. And I thought, aha, now if that isn't innovation, trepidation and adaptation, I don't know what is, introvert here. And you know, one thing that I would just love to share about that, um, something that has helped me personally with networking a tremendous number of my clients is I, I work exclusively with lawyers, so and I am a lawyer, so I'm going to speak to and for lawyers here. I think it applies to others as well. For lawyers, we are bred with something of a, I need to be the smart person in the room. I need to establish my value. I need to show up with something to offer. And that's really important. There is definitely a time and a place for that. That is something that I think does come out in every single relationship, because if it's always, you know, tell me more, I want to know more about you, you know, that's warm and fuzzy and, and possibly more comfortable, but it won't get you to the next level, whether it's your business, a business opportunity, whatever your purpose for networking may be. That being said, one of the things that I find really helpful for initiating relationships, getting into those first steps where you're starting to know someone is asking questions. And I had a client one time who desperately needed to broaden her network. She really did not want to. I mean, not, I, I don't want to say she was resistant to networking. She was adamantly opposed to networking. She was fine with meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, but the idea of walking into a room mostly of strangers was just something she was unwilling to do. And yet she had to because she needed to broaden her network in a whole different direction. So we came up with this strategy where she would go in, she would have like five questions set in advance that would in some way be relevant to this group, this event, whatever it might be. 
she would prepare to ask them. And if she had asked those questions to five, to, I'm sorry, to three people. So out of five questions pre-prepared to three people, then she could leave. And what she found is that every time she used this strategy, she would get into at least one really good conversation that would develop into a useful relationship in some form. And she said that in fact, one time, one of the early times she did this, she started talking with someone and she asked one of her questions and that just led to this lovely question spiral, the next question and the next question. And at the end of it, this person said, they, there was a, a forced end, I don't remember, maybe they were called into dinner or something. And the person she was talking to said, I am so sorry. I, this has just been one of the most fascinating conversations I've ever had. I want to be sure to follow up with you. Now, what had she said about herself at that point? Almost nothing. But she was such an engaging questioner, conversationalist, that it was comfortable for her and it got into what turned out to be an amazing business relationship. So I say that specifically for the introverts of the world. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I have, um, thank you for sharing that. I am an introvert. I was an incredibly shy kid. It's so kind of fascinating that this Julie and I are talking and, and we've built businesses on the value of networking relationships, you know, and we're both introverts. And I've always, you know, walked into the room, whether live or virtual, of if I look at this time of making somebody else who might feel really uncomfortable, feel comfortable, then I've accomplished something. I've done something valuable for somebody else. And business will flow if I show up and give value. Doesn't mean we don't ask for business as needed as when opportunity presents more like it. But I will say, I've always shown up in everything of is if I can help somebody else feel more comfortable walking into this room, whether it be live or virtual. So even on a virtual Zoom, Teams, whatever, if I see somebody in my regular groups that's new, I'll do that private chat and I'm like, hey, welcome, who invited you? It's so nice to meet you, I'm so glad you're here. And think about if you have this Zoom meeting of 30 to 50 people, how nice that makes them feel and what you've done for others. So, you know, it, it's just, it's a little trick that I have used for my own survival and I share forward. <laughs> yes. And it started as my survival and has come to great business development from there. And, and survival for me also turns into fun. So I don't even want to paint it as survival overall it becomes something that when you've got your strategies in place it, and, and you see results, that's important. It becomes something that for me, I look forward to. So thank you everyone for being here. This has been a fun conversation with you, Ivy. I never cease to learn something, always. <laughs> and right back at you, Julie. Every time we show up together, there is something new that I learned from you. And actually, as well as great new things I've learned from our attendees today. Absolutely. I love the follow through Thursday. I love the carving out that the whole, everybody is committed there for the two hours. There were such wonderful nuggets that our attendees and our, our listeners shared. So I thank you guys for joining us. And please, again, mark your calendars for March 11th, when we are gonna be talking about innovation, trepidation, and adaptation, and how that has a great impact on business development. We will look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ivy. Bye. Bye.